Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, your host, and we are coming to you live from the Business Radio X studio inside beautiful Renaissance Bank in beautiful Alpharetta. And speaking of beautiful Alpharetta, <laughs> we're going to talk to uh, a man that's making some of that happen, uh, Ted Schwartz. Ted is with Joel and Grinot Commercial Real Estate. Joel, welcome. Thank you, John. Great to have you here. Good to be here. Yeah. So tell us about you. Tell us about Joel and Grinot. Uh, John, it's, it's really a um, boutique uh, commercial real estate firm. We're we're based in Atlanta. We've been in Atlanta for as long as I can remember. I've been in Atlanta for 30 years. Uh, was formed by Alan Joel and uh, Dan Granat, and uh, they're native Atlantans. And uh, they they formed the organization uh, back in 2010, mm-hmm. uh, right out of the recession. It was basically two real estate entrepreneurs that came from big organizations um, and they, they formed an alliance in West Midtown. And uh, I am really uh, a part of them. I, I joined Alan Joel back in 1997 um, and then left for a period of time and came back in 2015. And I've been there for the last five years. And uh, we've been a growing little boutique. Uh, We're right off of I-75. As you see the signs going to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, uh, we're one of the first things you see as you go down on 75. And uh, we've been a growing boutique and uh, happy to see 2020. Well, that's going on in 2020, but I want to, before we get into that, talk a little bit about you, how, how did you get into commercial real estate? Great question. Um, like many people, um, we, we stumble through it. Um, we defined our passion. And uh, before I was in commercial real estate, I was a banker. I was also in the travel business. And um, then I took a test. And uh, it was a program down in midtown called the highlands program and it said you need to be in real estate um oh wow quite frankly i didn't want to work the weekend so it made it pretty easy for me um (laughs) i didn't really care about someone's kitchen to be very honest so Uh, commercial was the choice versus residential yeah it was the choice and then you know and and, you know and, and and some of us we go through different different businesses in, in real estate. We, I went to a small firm called Newberger Andes and I went to a, a even smaller firm called Allen Joel partners. Mm. And, and then I went to a bigger firm called Ackerman and company. Mm-hmm. And now I'm with Joel and Granat. Okay. Um, many people have said, well, why don't you own your own firm? And I essentially do. Uh, but I don't like all the, um, the niceties of running the house. I like to run what I, I run, which is my clients mm-hmm. and help them find space and, and let the business side run itself. I, 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 I'm, I care to be in front of the clients and sure. client facing. Sure. Now you have uh, focused in on North Fulton as a, as an, an area of expertise for you. Not that that's the only place you you do business because you're no. You, you it's not the only Atlanta. place I do business, but right. but but it, it's become a focus. Right, um, it's become a focus because um, I think I first I started living here. Um, I bought my first house uh, in 1993, um, and it was right on Old Milton Parkway. So I mean, it was uh, it, it was a really unique experience, and so I when I got started. I wanted to um, focus on an area I knew. Sure. And so in uh, 97, I joined the Alfred Rotary Club. 
And I just made a mission to work with people that um, I actually joined the North Fulton Chamber in 1997 as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just decided to make it a focus to work with people um, that I know and live with. Sure. Sure. And that was a pretty good uh, uh, decision in terms of the future of North Fulton, right? I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, wow. sometimes you get a little bit lucky. Oh, come on. It was y'all. You're smarts, right? Ted. I mean, you could, you could tell you, me that, right? You, know, I mean, you, you had a great crystal yesterday, ball. Yesterday, yesterday I, w- I was in office building and I, I knew it was built right when I started in the business and it was built by cousins properties in the early, early mid nineties. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get lucky. Yeah. It's it just, and this has been a lucky place to be. Um, and, and really been blessed to have great leadership. It doesn't happen just simply, um, by luck. It happens because people are, are good people. They really understand the market and understand where they want to go. Sure. Um, you know, and, and this, this area is now the fourth largest office market in Atlanta. Now it wasn't in 1997, um, but it grew because it understood that it was on a major artery. It understood that, uh, executives like to live up here and understood that it had good schools. I would say great schools. Mm-hmm. And, and so it really understood it marketplace and then simply expanded upon it. Now in the last 10 years, we've seen the birth of Avalon, um, a game changer. Mm-hmm. Um, why? Because of where it's located mm-hmm. right up against 400. And then we're seeing the the birth of downtowns and uh, Alfred is not doing anything different than uh, the city of Swanee or Peachtree Corners, um, but it understands it and it understands how to do it. It understands, it follows the trends. It's no different than what's going on in Brookhaven right now. Brookhaven's going to search to find its downtown in the next three to five years, that'll happen too. So I've seen um, how North Fulton has done it, and it's been a catalyst for other organ- other cities in and around Atlanta. So. so let's talk about the the market here specifically. I mean, I, you know, I think those of us that are here every day – we both know the answer to this question and take it for granted. I mean, what, what makes Alpharetta and the North Fulton market generally so unique? Well, I, I think it really comes to the factors that are important um, for business. Um, it's no mystery that businesses get attracted by having a great workforce population. Um, it's no mystery that people want to live where it has a great population. It comes down to the um, good education, a place to raise a family. You know, the biggest issue now is how do you keep it together? As we get a little bit older, we're all getting older. You're getting older, John. I'm getting older. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> oh, trust me, I am. Uh, but I don't feel older. But, but, you know, is, is how do you attract and maintain those, the new generation, the millennials, my daughter, that, right. that millennial, how sure. are we going to uh, maintain them? And how is it, I would, I would suggest to you that it's not all about MARTA, but it's all, of, it does concern about, you know, now we have all these different ways to get from one place to the other, the Ubers of the world. Um, But it's how do we keep them there? Mm. You know, everything now is what we call, I call it mixed use. Yep. Um, And everything has to have not only just an office component. It's got to have a multifamily component. It's got to have a retail component. And um, 
you know, that that's the secret now to success is how how every project that you see North Point Mall in being revitalized is not just about retail. Right. It's how to fill that concrete in that retail with other different types of uses that work. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Um, since you brought up North Point, let's talk about North Point. Uh, mm -hmm. what, how, how do you see all that playing out? Uh, I mean, the city can plan, but the market ultimately kind of takes over at a certain point, right? That's yeah. exactly what my client said yeah. uh, yesterday. I was working with a law firm, and they said, do you really think this is going to work? Mm -hmm. Do you really? Th I, I, and, I, and I said, you know, people go to places that they like. People go, and, and people do go to the next big thing. I, uh, that's true. <laughs> it happens. Oh, come I on. Get it. I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> but, but people like places that they like to sure. go to. They like to shop. They like to be around. And North Point is really the next thing. Um, Mayor Gilvin has really put it on the forefront. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I kid aside, I'd say, you know, he, he, he wants to do what David Belisle did with the uh, Avalon and stuff like that. And we're downtown Alpharetta. Um, but, you know, it's really about reusing a great geographic footprint. That's really what North Point Mall is, is a mm. great geographic footprint. Mm -hmm. But reimagining it for the next 20 years. Right. That what worked in 1992 or three and is not the same now because we have nothing but concrete and asphalt and we got to reuse that in a more vibrant way. Right. People have to become greener. People have to find different uses. Um, and, you know, Kathy Cook, as I, I will tell you, Kathy has been around the city of Alpharetta now for almost 28 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And she's seen it all. And, and she really needs to be commended. Without someone like Kathy Cook's vision, looking back and looking forward, um, you know, the city wouldn't be where it is today. And Roswell, Steve Stroud. You know, Steve, I know Lori's the mayor. But Steve kind of the mayor. He's really the mayor. <laughs> he really well, fuels the engine. And and I, I mean, no offense, Lori. I'm sorry. Uh, well, and and this is. I think this is a great point, Ted. And I, I want to amplify that because mayors come and go, and we 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 like our mayors, and so let's tip our cap to them so they they don't get offended. But the folks that are in those offices that are going to be there when that current mayor is gone who's been doing all this work for all these years, like Kathy and Steve, I mean, those folks are the ones that make it happen, right? They're, they're the drivers. They, and they don't they're, get the they're attention. They're the engine. Right. They're, they are the engine. Right. They are, they are their cheerleader. Mm -hmm. um, they are the ones that are speaking out for the city. They are the ones that are looking forward mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and are there. Right. They're there every single day. Right. And so it's great to work with those those folks, because I can't do my job without them. Mm -hmm. I can't sell the city. I can't put the tenant in there. I can't tell the landlord this is a this is a great opportunity. Um, I'm looking at a new project right now, and we're in Alpharetta, and we're we're looking at how we redo this building. How do we reimagine what this is? I, it's already got great fundamentals. It's in a good location. It's on North Point Parkway. Mm. But how do we how do we figure out what this is going to be in the next ten to fifteen years? And that's our challenge. Mm. We're speaking with Ted Schwartz, and Ted is a partner with Joel and Granat Commercial Real Estate. I think I said Grenot on the way in. Sorry about that. Joel You're French. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. My high school French is coming back on me. Joel and Granat Commercial Real Estate. Now, um Ted, I I want to talk more about North Fulton, but I also want to make sure we get to how you work with clients. Lot, lots of commercial real estate professionals out there. Why you? Why, why should I come to you to get your help? 
because it's not just about the real estate deal. Real estate deal, there's fundamentals. We understand it. It's about the whole package. Um, it's about how am I positioning my business? Where is my business going to go? It's more than just dollars and cents. Yes, that's part of it. I understand it. But it's about where am I going to grow my business? Where am I going to exit my business? Mm. I'm kind of here for all of that. Um, and it's not all about the real estate. Yes, it is. But it's also about moving. There, There is one thing that I know that I do almost every time. It's sometimes they renew and they, they de- definitely stay and they definitely expand and they definitely do that. But they also move. They also buy a building. There has to be a plan behind that. And it's more than just the real estate. Real estate is just the vehicle mm. that drives the engine. Sure. But it is about putting the team together. I can kind of think that I'm kind of a quarterback um, and, and kind of help cattle be a catalyst for all the different um, things that happen. It's about, you know, that, that mover, that furniture person, that space planner person, all those sort of things. And then at the end of the rainbow, it's about selling that business. At some point they get older like us. And, and sometimes they think about what's the exit, right? How do I exit from this? Right. I was at a meeting today and it was all about, mergers and acquisitions and how do we sell and how do we know what the value of that business is? Well, part of that is talking to the real estate guy to figure out what you have and what you're going to have or what you're looking to do and what you're looking to sell. I would tell you right now, it is a hard time to buy a building right now. If I'm a a tenant and I want to go find a building to purchase, I'm telling you, you, we got to be really, really picky as to for what we buy. It's got to really make sense. Don't over, um, over leverage. Don't buy too much. Don't overpay. Okay. And then, you know, that's my job. Sometimes right. I'm not going to do as many sales. Sometimes I'm going to do more leasing than sales because that's where I think the market is. And just to be clear, I mean, that's not, giving that advice is not in your financial best interest, right? I mean, you make more money uh, selling real estate than you do uh, doing a leasing deal, it, right? It depends, Okay, but but my job is to do what's right for the client and right. what's right for the market. Mm-hmm. The market the market talks, um, and sometimes you have buildings that uh, I have clients that want to sell a building, and, um, you know, some things they have to do in order to make it, palatable for somebody to buy right and some and it's all about fitting it into a puzzle and um the market does speak almost all the time (laughs) it's just a question of whether you're listening or not right that's the question yeah yeah and that's what you help people do uh uh is listen i suppose so um talk about some of your i mean you've been around a while talk about some of the your favorite deals, your favorite projects you've worked on in North Fulton, maybe one, uh, or, one or two. Well, if I, if you just put a gun to me and just said, pick your favorite, um, I, I could pick a favorite. Um, there's a company called Cognia. Uh, Cognia is an education organization. They do the testing and accreditation for schools. They do it all over the world. They're in over 70 countries, and uh, they test scores from over 35,000 students. I Actually, they would tell me it's probably 40, but I don't remember them telling me 40,000. <laughs> but in any event, they have a facility on Westside Parkway. And uh, we found that facility because uh, Sanctuary Park turned us down. Um, and we bought this facility, and... In 2008, we built the building in 2009 and 10. So really interesting times. Mm. In the last year, um, we expanded the facility. When we first built the facility, it was 60,000 square feet. 
And then we added a second building that was 40,000 square feet. It just finished back in October. And um, I will tell you that they still own about five acres in North Fulton and uh, on that campus. And we have an idea for the next building. Um, So it's a great company. They're headquartered in Alpharetta. They merged with another company called Measured Progress in New Hampshire. Um, And so they have um, over a couple hundred a couple hundred employees and they're about a hundred million dollar company. And it all started because uh, my client wanted to move from Decatur. Mm. Decatur. They were right uh, by the VA hospital Mm. back in 2007. Uh, That's awesome. Tidge Schwartz is with us. He is a partner with Joel, Joel and Granat commercial real estate. Um, so Ted, you are um looking ahead to 2020. And what I hear you saying is uh your bias is toward renting versus or leasing versus buying. Um but you maybe you can expand on that and talk about what else you see going on in the market for 2020 and beyond. I I think things have to correct. I think that it is not possible, although I guess stranger things have happened, it's not possible to sustain sustain the run that we've been on. Mm. Um, granted, it was a very bad time, um, but the, the markets have to correct. If I am someone who is in the investment real estate world, um, I'm nervous. Everything has been picked over. I, I have clients that want to buy things too. Mm-hmm. But when I find that the building was sold in 2016 or 17 or 18 or 19, I know that they're probably not in the market to sell. Unless they say, I'm going to take my chips off the table. Mm-hmm. And then you have to figure out if this is the right time to put chips down on the table. So that's really the biggest thing I see as far as rental rates go and, and leasing space. Um, I continue to see a, a, a demand for space. However, people are using space differently. It's now co-working co-working is, is played a major role in how um, I would call institutional real estate works. Right. Um, but I see that the inflation of rental rates, um, starting to flatten out. Um, we're not seeing the big bumps that we saw a couple years ago. Um, however, having said that you could still walk into the Avalon world and at that rate for those buildings, high rise buildings are going to be north of $40 a square foot. Whereas 10 years ago, we didn't have a market with $40 a square foot rents in North Fulton. That didn't, didn't occur. All right. Um, people in fact, you, 30, 30 was the big line Yeah, and they crossed it over. And now you have plus $30 a square foot in most of the, um, high rise, um, buildings in North Fulton. So, so Ted, I want to make sure we get to, uh, something uh, a little personal to you. So you, you've got some charitable activities you're involved in outside of work. Yes. Um, that you've been awarded for. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm going to bring it up. So, cause you said, I'm a ma- humble guy, man. It, but I'm going to make, make you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> or if I don't ask about it, you won't say anything about it. So, no, so tell um, us. No, John, thank you. I, I am passionate about several things, but, um, the thing that drives me is, um, I'm a type one diabetic. My son is a type one diabetic and we, uh, we basically raise money every year for a cause called JDRF juvenile diabetes research foundation, JDRF tomorrow is actually the start of the 2020 ride season, uh, to sign up. And, uh, this coming year I'm going to be riding in grand Rapids, Michigan, I know, hold your thoughts. Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm going to be at Amelia Island. I ride a century ride. 
um, on a bike and I ride for the cause. I don't ride for time. You're not going to see me going <laughs> really fast. Uh, but uh, I raise money for JDRF. Uh, my goal is to raise at least $10,000 um, in a given ride year. I've been awarded uh, best ride team. I have my wife, Cheryl, she rides too, and we ride as a family. And um, our job is to really make people more aware of type 1 diabetes and the um, the efforts to make the disease easier on people mm-hmm. and to hopefully one day find a cure. Mm. That's awesome. Um, and that Michigan connection, I mean, that that's not accidental, right? That's like the homeland, right? Well, not, I mean, you're smart, not exactly, you're, but my daughter did go to Michigan State. Okay, okay. And so she uh, she's a Spartan. Yep. And uh, and that makes you a Spartan. Yeah, uh, kind of. It makes me a Spartan, except when I watched their basketball game on last Sunday and they lost by thirty. But um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's it, you know, I went to school in the Midwest. I went to Indiana University, and uh, I really love the people of the Midwest. Uh, mm-hmm. They're really. They're down home. They're real. Mm. Um, if you come to meet me, you'll find that I'm a very real and direct person. I don't beat around the bush. I, I kind of say what I think. Um, sometimes people don't want to hear that, but that's okay. Uh, but they'll hear the truth. Mm. I think that's important. People have to be truthful um, in the world that we live in right now. Um, and it's a very important year. I think 2020, you know, we're going to be selecting a president for the next four years. And I think we have a real choice to make. I think we have a decision whether we continue the way we are the last couple of years or make a change. And I, John, I'm not going to get political, but I think change is always good. I think change in anything, whether uh, you, you, you have to look at a new way to do things. And, um, you know, hopefully in the next four years, we'll learn about new things to do. Um, and I get excited when things change, right? when real estate changes, the economy changes, anything changes. And it's exciting to embrace the change and then figure out the solution as a result of that change. Hmm. Well, and if you like change, uh, that must be one reason why you're in North Fulton real estate, right? Because there's a, there's a lot it's of change. Always it's changing. Yeah, yeah, it always changing. It always does sure. things. And uh, it's exciting to be on the change. I mean, the transportation, mm-hmm. we've got things going on on Georgia 400 um, that will change in the next 10 years and how we look and think about um, things, soft rail. Mm. That's really exciting. Uh, hard rail costs too much and it takes too long to implement. Right. But soft rail, that's a really good and abrasive idea. I really like that. Yeah, cool. Uh, Ted Schwartz. Uh, has been with us. He's uh, with Joel and Granat Commercial Real Estate. He's a partner there. Uh, folks, if you need real estate, uh, commercial real estate help, Ted's your man. Ted, tell everybody how to get in touch with you. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is either by way of email. That's Ted, T E D, at Joel and Granat, Joel and Granat dot com. Uh, but the other way to get me is on myself. Call me anytime, 770-713-2775. And I'm going to leave with my tagline. Okay. If you need space, I'll find the place. I love it. Ted Schwartz. Thank you, Ted, for being with us. Uh, Folks, today you're connected more than ever, whether it's your friends, your family, or your life. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering the mobile banking services that you need. And Renaissance also knows that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers. And that's why Renaissance has more than 190 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. For more information, go to renaissancebank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. Folks, just a reminder, you can listen to this show every Tuesday morning, live at 1130. And sometimes we have special shows at other times through the week. But if you miss any of our live shows, you can follow us or find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google, TuneIn, Spotify, uh, really any of your favorite uh, podcast 
apps. Mine happens to be overcast, but check us out. I have yet to be stumped on a podcast app you cannot find North Fulton Business Radio on. Uh, just search for North Fulton Business Radio and you'll find us. Or you can go online uh, and find us there, NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com. Uh, check out our archive there. Lots of great business leaders that we've had over these past four years of doing this show um, uh, in addition to Ted. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, North Fulton BRX is our address on all three of those social media channels. So for my guest, Ted Schwartz, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio. Today, you are connected more than ever your friends, your family, your life. And banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering mobile banking services you need. At Renaissance, we also understand that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers. That's why Renaissance has more than 170 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC.